In this first edition of Fact or Freud, we'll explore the Oedipus complex, why it's probably wrong, and the post-Freudian alternative known as the Oedipus project. Before we get into Freud, I wanted to start by saying the YouTube algorithm is smart. If you've been served the impression for this video, you must have a fondness for psychological and philosophical concepts. In this world, we seem to be a dying breed. I know if everybody took comfort in learning and understanding the human condition, we would live in a better, more empathetic place. I just want to say thank you for being you and caring about this enough to click. Without further ado, here's why Freud was wrong. Freud was obsessed with his sexual instinct theory, which to be fair went a long way as an initial framework for psychoanalysis. In the beginning of the 1900s, we knew very little about the unconscious mind. Just as the porn industry is typically an early adopter of new technology like the internet, sex penetrated the imagination of early researchers to adopt the idea the unconscious mind could really exist. Also like porn, early psychoanalysis, in particular Freud, took sex a bit too far. One way Freud took his stark sexual formulations too far is with the Oedipus complex. In short, the Oedipus complex suggests that young boys have unconscious sexual desires for their mother and view their father as a rival for her affections. Freud's resolution to this complex involves the boy identifying with the father and suppressing his desire for the mother, which allows for healthy psychosexual development. Keep in mind, Freud, the father of psychoanalysis, held this complex as the central dynamic in psychic life. He thought the boy held in check his sexual urge for the mother because a physical confrontation with his competitor, his father, would result in a loss and potentially the loss of his genitals, a.k.a. castration. To understand why Freud is wrong, we need to first get inside the mind of the baby. As babies, we are fully dependent on our parents, in particular our mothers. This is called the oral stage. This stage of development is huge because it sets up a power dynamic that puts the baby in charge. Ernest Becker describes it best. He said, The child then, at this time, is simply full of himself, an unflinchable manipulator and champion of his world. He lives suffused in his own omnipotence and magically controls everything he needs to feed that omnipotence. The child triumphantly controls his world by controlling the mother. But as we know, this oral stage doesn't last. Eventually, the child begins to understand that they are separate from the mother, especially when, in Becker's terms, the body becomes an object in the child's phenomenological field. When the child identifies with his own body, this is known as the anal stage. The child goes from reliance on the parents to reliance on their own body for power. But we all know the child's fresh discovery of their body is not to be relied on. Not only are children physically small and uncoordinated, but even full-grown adults are physically impotent in the animal kingdom. We don't have sharp claws, powerful grip strength, or strong biting power compared to other animals. None of us can rely on our physicality for power. The way the child realizes this physical failure is, of course, through the parents, and that causes resentment. The child's resentment of physical failure is stronger towards the mother, because the mother herself has less physical strength than the father and therefore represents the failure the child has just experienced. Additionally, the mother is more bound to nature given her role as childbearer. Last and most importantly, the child already was connected to the mother's powers during the oral stage. She was the child's first ally in this power struggle. Then the child's own body was the next ally. Both failed to give the child the power they demand. The child is now confused and discouraged not about their sexual failure to attain the opposite sex, but confused and discouraged about where their power will come from, if not from the mother or the body. It's not that the boy wants to kill the father to sexually possess the mother, but it's that the boy wants to transcend the father to become the father of himself. Becker writes, Rather, the Oedipus complex is the Oedipus project, a project that sums up the basic problem of the child's life. Whether he will be a passive object of fate, an appendage of others, a plaything of the world, or whether he will be an active centre within himself. The Oedipal project is the flight from passivity, from obliteration, from contingency. The child wants to conquer death by becoming the father of himself, the creator and sustainer of his own life. To summarise, the stages of childhood development are stages of power, particularly power from vulnerability and annihilation, also known as death. 
This power over death is easily given by the mother in the oral stage, easily assumed by the child after the discovery of his own body in the anal stage. And then with discouragement and confusion, this power is lost to realizations about the child's meager place in the world. Because the body is inherently sexual, and Freud's theories over exaggerated sexuality to explain too much, Freud formulated a transition out of the anal stage to include a complex that misinterpreted what the power struggle was for. It was not a struggle for sexual gratification, but really a struggle against existential annihilation. Rather than the child wanting to kill and sexually replace the father, the child wants to transcend the father and not rely on him for general power. The child, although resentful of his physical failure, gives the father a bit more credence because the child doesn't understand the father's role as well as the mother's. The mother already let the child down as the oral stage came and went. Maybe the father has some unrealized magic the child can harness. After all, the father is slightly more physically out of nature than the mother, and he represents cultural power as he is typically more absent, and returns from somewhere where he must have done something. As we've seen in modern society, attaining cultural power and gaining immortality via cultural forms like wealth and status is fulfilling regardless of gender. Not to bash Freud, but the Oedipus complex seems like the product of a genius obsessed with his own theory who lived in a misogynist environment. I hope you all liked the breakdown of the Oedipus project and can see how masculine immortality power is sex agnostic. It's a product of when the child confronts the father in their development stages. Hypothetically, if the child confronted the father first, instead of the mother, say if the father was the breastfeeder, the child would confront the mother after they confronted their own bodies, and the project would be to become the mother of themselves. Comment what you think. I'm interested to hear. Also, hit the subscribe button. It helps the channel immensely. Thanks for watching.